this week. Alex Horan from Onapsis joins us. To be or not to be a consultant is the question for listener feedback. The NSA gets hacked. Well, sort of. Snowden thinks it's Russia, like maybe sort of. And the perception of hacker jeopardy is in jeopardy. All that and more, so stay tuned. Black Hills Information Security, the leaders in penetration testing and active defense. Email consulting at blackhillsinfosec.com to request a quote today. Threat Connect is the industry's most widely adopted threat intelligence platform. Built to unite the people, processes, and technologies across your security team, your organization, and your entire ecosystem of partners. Threat Connect's threat intelligence platform enables your team to collaborate, analyze, and make sense of threat data all in one place. Empower your team towards fast and efficient analysis that leads to decisive action. Transform your entire threat detection and response program today. Claim your free account at threatconnect.com forward slash security weekly. Faraday is an open source collaborative pen test and vulnerability management platform. With real time dashboards and more than 50 tools, Faraday allows seamless integration with your security workflow, allowing CISOs and pen testers to see in real time the impact and risks uncovered from assessments. Scan your network every day using different tools and get one click reports. Creating a collaborative experience, sharing knowledge, and making pen testing fun again. This is Faraday. Visit Faraday. Sec.com for more information. Uh, hello. Hi. Hello. And welcome to the show. Because <laughs> here is your giggling host. He's a man who's up to date on his tetanus shots and needs lots of band-aids. <laughs> Mr. Paul Asadoria. <laughs> oh, hey, welcome hey. to Security <laughs> Weekly. I'm your host, Paul Asadorian, and joined here in studio, starting to my left. Here live in G-Unit Studios is none other than Mr. Jeff Mann. How's it going, Paul? It's going fantastic. That's not what you were so, saying before. <laughs> no, it really, it really, it really, uh, you know. If it I, wasn't for the bloodshed. Yeah, like I just, I walk into things and cut myself a lot. Not on purpose, but that, because that uh, would all, require a medical <laughs> professional. <laughs> all in the sake a of A different pee. kind of medical all, professional. All, all in the sake of peeing, right? And being lazy. That's, yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Larry Pesci is here in studio. Yes. This is Survi- my survived DEFCON. <coughs> we survived DEFCON recovery. That's good. Yes. And then back yeah. to Vegas in like two weeks to go and, but do you Sands all Save again. some up for DerbyCon. I was on the, the Trusted Sec podcast earlier today. Nice. That was fun. That was a, always, a lot of. Uh, always sit, plenty of time between DEFCON and DerbyCon to get yeah, saved up. To get saved up. Oh, yeah, yeah, That's yeah. good. Yeah. So DerbyCon's <laughs> canceled. That's you know, they make the joke every <laughs> week. It's pretty funny. <laughs> I like it. Uh, on the lines via Skype, Mr. Carlos Perez. Welcome, Carlos. Hi, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Can you guys hear me? Yeah, oh, there hey, he there he is. What's going on, Carlos? Doing good. Good to talk to you, my friend. Mm. Uh, are you doing training at DerbyCon this year? Yes, oh, I'm teaching my PowerShot class. Uh, is it sold out already? It's sold out in less than 24 hours. Wow. Yeah, all, of, all of the classes are sold out. It's a good problem yep. to have. You need to get them to put some more seats in there, dude. Um, I asked, but they told me no. Oh. oh. Uh, and I'm also presenting right after the keynote. Oh, Excellent. nice. Oh, wow. That's a good speaking slot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm going against Ed Scotus and Metasploit Town Hall, so more than likely my room will be empty. That is probably not a good a- slot. Actually, but <laughs> actually, no, Carlos. <laughs> what are you speaking on? Yeah, what's your topic? Yeah, what's the topic? Uh, thinking purple. Uh, I'll be at your talk. <laughs> so it's about, it's about Barney? Is it? No? You no. gave me now an idea of an image to add to my slide deck. Mm. You're, well, you're welcome. <laughs> and, you know, and you know the difference between pink and purple is, right? The grip. The grip. <laughs> <laughs> I was slacking on that one. I, I should know, have had that one I sooner. I had to think about it. And I'm also speaking at DerbyCon. What are you speaking about? Saturday. It's uh, well, it's in the the show. It's in the show notes. Yeah, no, it's in the. Uh, it's in the schedule, um, which I don't know if they've published yet. Uh, but we are at in Guardians. We are releasing um, uh, the talk title is called "I Don't Give One Iota," and it's releasing the Internet of Things attack methodology. It's oh, a nice. a methodology, not a tool. Or Correct. is it? A tool? It is, a, it is so. a methodology, not a tool. I like it. Is that the one you t- you used to hack uh, Paul's automated home? Uh, no. No, oh. dude, just merely perfected it that way. Come on. <laughs> Show me how you unlocked my door. Do you Come think on. you could uh, hack Tenable the studio? Can you make it not go to 78 at 6 <laughs> o'clock every, day, every night? Why would I do undo the hack that I already did? 
<laughs> That's not even a smart thermostat. <laughs> exactly. I what are those case. wires? There's a Raspberry Pi behind it. Where does that come from? Uh, so, yeah, it's, a, it's very much about talking about the methodology about approaching uh, pen test from IoT and all nice. the parts that it encompasses because it's, uh, it's a heck of a lot larger than a lot, people, a lot of people think. Your parts are a lot larger than people think. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I don't usually hear that, but... <laughs> Jeff, but, where are you but speaking about? But it's nice about? to hear it. Are you speaking it's nice about? To, it's nice to hear it from you, Paul. I, yes. am, I am. Are not. you speaking about your parts or Larry's parts at any conferences? Uh, what's my next conference? Uh, it's Gurkhan. 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 Where is Gurkhan? It's in uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan. Yes. Yep. I think there's a B sides in there here or there beforehand. <coughs> are you speaking? <laughs> am Sorry. I speaking? Thank you. No, you're speaking now, but are you speaking at the conference? <laughs> I'm speaking at Gurkhan. I'm sp- what's your title? What's your talk? At? Um, Tales from the Crypt, dot, dot, dot. Yes. Analyst. <laughs> I like it. Yes. I like it. There's a graphic and everything. Mm-hmm. It's pretty cool. Tip <laughs> Tales from the Crypt Analyst? Uh, yes. Something like that. Yes, yeah. pictures and everything. I'm just going to tell some stories about stuff I used to do back in uh, my early days at NSA when I was a crypt analyst. Should be fun. Cool. Um, Let's see. Oh, uh, I'll round it out on the conference thing. DerbyCon, we're hopefully going to have those onesies available that say... Nice. Yeah, nice. I have an I offensive have, countermeasure in my diaper. Yeah, That's and awesome. I, I brought it up uh, earlier on the Trusted Sex show that we should also make adult sizes. We should. So. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't run that by John or marketing yet. I think you just did, and I yeah, think it was approved. I think, I think it's unanimously... Think if you want approved. an adult shirt that says... I have offensive countermeasures in my diaper. No, 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 no. I do not want an adult shirt. I want an adult onesie. An adult onesie? Yes. <laughs> I think they're called send singlets. It, send me a tweet so like, I can show our marketing that there's actual interest in it. Um, I don't know if they make adult onesies. Yeah, dude, they're, dude, they're, they're called they, singlets. They, it's called the internet. <laughs> <laughs> and that could be the new, you have to wear one of these instead of getting iced. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about guerrilla marketing. Yeah. So if you want okay. an adult onesie or t-shirt, tweet me, Security Weekly on Twitter, and we'll, we'll, we'll do a grassroots effort to get this stuff made up. Uh, okay, so All listener right. feedback. To be or not to be a contractor, I think I said consultant earlier. Consultant. You did. Is, con- there, is there a difference? Well, consultant implies that you could work for another organization, um, and a contractor implies that you're in business for yourself. Of course, you could be an independent consultant, in which case you would work for yourself. In which case you'd be a contractor. Yeah. Let me. Can I, I'm going to read the listener feedback now. Let's read the okay. listener you feedback. Know, let's, so Chris writes in, Hey, Paul, long-time listener, first-time caller. I have a question about my career development. We love your input and the input of your guests. Not, not sure you want to get maybe the other host, probably not all of our guests. They would have some very interesting feedback, um, <coughs> which would vary greatly. Mm-hmm. I've been working in IT for the last three years as an employee. Recently, I've been filling in as a fixed-term employee, and the term is coming to an end. Um, the manager said, basically, um, there's not enough room to take him on full-time. He's working trying to get an approval as a contractor, potentially at a higher rate. Um, he says he's never worked as a contractor. I know I have to incorporate that, uh, incorporate in that I'll be working through an employment agency to pure, procure... Mm, procurement due to Yes, okay. Yeah. Uh, and so he's spoken to other contractors, but wants more help about how do you mm. become an independent contractor or consu- independent consultant? Yeah. Well, I think the first consideration you need to, to make is, do you want to get paid? Do you want to work? If there's, well, if there's other options out there, you know, mm-hmm. full-time employment is good. But if you want independence, autonomy, and somebody's willing to pay you? Maybe being mm-hmm. a contractor isn't a bad thing. Some some <coughs> other things that immediately would come to mind to think about would be along the lines of depending on the uh, employment agency. Um, if you work full time for the employment agency, who's responsible for your medical insurance and such? Mm-hmm. Um, so that if you're being brought in as a contractor and you have to provide your own medical insurance through something like Cobra or some other plan, um, that well, higher rate <coughs> might not actually be higher. I think yeah. it comes down, and Jeff kind of touched on this. It comes yeah. down to freedom. Right. right, like how much freedom? Mm-hmm. If you want to be your own one-person company, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of freedom that comes with that, a lot of flexibility. Um, but 
you're going to have to worry about things like health insurance. Mm -hmm. You have to worry about things like insurance in general. Because if you're doing security, especially security, especially security, you're going to want to make sure. In fact, some contracts are going to require that you have insurance. Mm -hmm. A lot of us have been been down this road. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. You need a lawyer and retainer. Yep, a lawyer lawyer and retainer. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You also need to remember, assuming they're working in the U.S., uh, self-employment tax. Yeah. So incorporate is uh, a good question. He did already sort of mention that he was going to have to incorporate. incorporate. Another another thing, which is the psychological one, is that many people, hey, I'm going to go into employment by myself. This is going to be great. I'm going to be working 100% in what I like and love. Yeah. No. No. You're going to spend a lot of time uh, dealing with uh, the managerial side of your own business. Yes. yes. If, you're, if, if you have more than one client. If it is one single client, probably you can manage. You can pay on the side <clears throat> of CPA to handle your finances and just have a meeting with them every two weeks or something like that. But um, if it is more than that, you, you're going to have the managerial overhead that you typically didn't see well, you work for an organization. Now you're going to be doing that overhead that uh, somebody else managed when you were uh, gainfully employed by a company. Mm-hmm. Now, keep in mind, flexibility also comes with, yeah, you can, do you want to take time off? You got as much vacation time as, as you want to allot right. to yourself. You got as much unpaid vacation time as it's, you would like. <laughs> unpaid is the key right. word. If mm-hmm. you're not working, you're not Earned making money. money. Yep. Yeah. But now, on the positive side, so these are all kind of negative things about being a sure. contract. On the positive side, though, a lot of the corporate BS, for lack of a better term, right. um, doesn't apply to you. So how much vacation and sick time you have and all the policies and procedures that go along with it, mm-hmm. you don't have to deal with. Um, you know, Certainly any not at your company, but at the companies that you're contracting for, you may have right. to deal with some of those. Right, right. Yeah, so a lot of that uh, corporate structure kind of stuff you don't have to deal with. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you don't like it, you go find another client. contract. Right. right. I don't know how much it applies these days. There was a time in my career when I was considering becoming an independent consultant contractor, and I had a customer that was trying to talk me into it because they wanted to just work with me directly and not with the company that I was working yep. for. And they, the process got stalled because they found out that they had a company policy said that said that they could not mm. hire independent contractors. Yes. So I mean, that being said, I mean, what are the positive things? I mean, positives, flexibility, more money. Um, if you really like the environment that you're in, at least in this case, you have the opportunity to be back in that environment. Right. Work from home, uh, certainly. Work from home. Work from also, home. work to focus. Many times. Um, when you're working for somebody else, it is their agenda. It is this yeah. is the product you're going to push or this is the type of service that you're going to sell. The advantage of being your own boss is that you can say, no, 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 I want to work only doing insert response or I want to work only doing penetration tests or I want to work specifically on this area that is what pa- uh, I have a passion for. It is that you can focus on that passion as long as you have enough customers willing to pay for it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, so, I mean, yeah, it, it's tricky being an independent contractor. I think it's not for everyone. Um, you're going to come to some crossroads where, hey, I could make more money if I just hire people, and now you're off starting your own business, which mm-hmm. is a totally different path than being HR. A, a, yeah, <laughs> being your own. You know, now you've got other people uh, to concern yourself with, and in all of the extra management and paperwork that comes along with that as well so um i mean i mean the listener doesn't really talk about what type of work he's been doing we're we're making some a lot of assumptions about the type of work Um, but it does make it sound like you know the the company that he's working with is willing to bring him back but these are the terms yeah so again you know if, if this is you know work that he's that the listener's enjoying and he would like to continue it and this is the way to do it that's a good reason to do it yeah yeah, I, I think and I, he would be stuck course. with one single company. He has to be very careful when he gets that contract. Read it uh, very closely that he's not tied only to them because right. a company can change their mind and all of a sudden now they don't know you any severance pay or anything. They just okay, we want to cancel the contract. Period. Mm-hmm. So he has to read that contract very well and make sure that he has somebody 
that negotiates uh, the contract and has his back. Yeah, I think um, when I think about the different areas of security and, and contractors, you know, pen testing is a, that's a kind of a pretty cool independent contractor gig because you can kind of pick and choose which pen test you want to participate in, where is if you have a pen test business, uh, in the beginning, you're, you can't be as selective right. uh, if you've got a right. team that you've got to keep busy. But if it's just yourself, you can be a little more selective in taking on the things that are interesting. And there's certainly something to be said for that. Uh, I find that um, programmers uh, a lot are independent contractors. So if you're looking to write software, and especially in security, we need mm -hmm. people like that. Uh, we're still uh, looking to hire Python programmers here, actually. No, but they don't uh, want to work for you. No, they, they don't want to be work independent. For me. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And you really don't want to work for Paul. But no. that's it. No. No. Can you blame them? <laughs> yeah. I, well, um, but you know, being a, a software uh, developer is is that's pretty cool. There's a need yeah. for that in security, and that lends itself, I think, to the independent contractor. A lot of website people are independent contractors as well. I'm yep. um, just thinking about who you know, we've hired over the years for independent contractors. So, um, it, you know, if you want to do security. It depends on what you want to do. Um, if you want to, you know, be implementing security solutions, that can be tricky uh, as an independent. A lot of those guys that do it or gals that, that do that kind of work are targeting more smaller businesses. You want to hire mm -hmm. just one person to come in and basically do everything, so you have to be more of a generalist. Um, do you guys see a lot of independent contractors like in the enterprise? doing enterprise security solutions? I really don't. I see as more integrators and bigger companies that are doing yeah, that, um, right? We do, um, and you know, maybe we're a little bit different in that, but uh, we do see a fair amount of contractors um, that are there to do enterprise security solutions. But typically those contracting folks end up being more um, either project management yes. or higher level sort of thought leadership type right. of stuff mm -hmm. right. than, than anything else. Um, very infrequently, they get stuck in uh, thought leadership and managing a single product role. Right. It's interesting. Um, my next point, I actually remember having conversations with Jay Beal about this, who was mentoring me on this subject uh, several years ago. And we got talking about, well, if your uh, penetration tester, right, for example, there uh, was, and there probably still is, lots of companies that want to hire you as mm -hmm. a contractor and have you go do a job, but when you do that job, you're representing their company. Mm -hmm. You don't work for whatever you called your contracting business and consulting. Yep. You're working for them as them, but you're still getting paid as a contractor. Yep. Right. Uh, and you're going to make that decision. I think personally, to get started, you got to go do that, right? right. Yep. At some point, I think most people come to a crossroads. Do I want to keep doing this or do I want to make a brand of my own? Uh, and, and, and call it my own. So it's the other thing that I think might actually uh, and a potential benefit is being perceived as a contractor going into one of those places that you're that outside fresh set of eyes mm -hmm. that everybody listens to. Like how many times have you gone into an organization to do a pen test and said we've been trying to get them to do this, this for, for years so long. Right. and you put it in your report it's like a one line thing that you should do that and that's the thing that blows up in the report like oh we're to do this, we're putting all our resources behind that because yep. it all it took yep. was for some independent third party, some Absolutely. contractor or some consultant to to say those things. Right. I mean that yeah that that definitely applies. I mean <clears throat> I was a consultant for many years, so that happened to me all the time. Just because you're the perceived expert, the knowledgeable person. I used to go in there and just ask people, what what are you telling your management that they're not hearing? Because if I say it, they're going to hear it. Trust me. And they would, and they did, and and. That was one of the techniques that I used just to actually kind of bond with the people I was working with. No, you have to be more social when you're a contractor. Yep. Uh, when you are an employee, probably if you don't like interacting a lot with people, you don't. Uh, you can just do your work and deliver. Uh, but once you're a contractor, you have to be a bit of a salesman. You have to mm -hmm. keep those relationships and maintain them and nourish them. Uh, constantly uh, with your customer or with your customers, uh, especially with the higher ups, and you need to know how to talk the business lingo. Um, it's not enough for being uber technical. You have to know about business. Mm -hmm. You know how to know. You, you know you have to know how to express yourself uh, when you're talking with upper management and get the message across. Um, it is. Uh, I work as a contractor myself. Uh, most of my contracting work is doing training, and 
I have to say it's part of the job. I have to maintain relationship with my customers. Uh, I email them from time to time. Um, I have my phone calls with key people in each one of the organizations. It is part of the job maintaining those relationships. Yeah, yeah we keep Go going back to senior level, more experienced people, and you know that's who we see at the enterprise. The 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 reader that wrote in said that they've been working for three years for this one company. So let's make an assumption that this person has three years of experience. Right. What kind of advice do we give someone that's still relatively junior? They might be really good at what they do. We have to make assumptions at what they do, and they might be you know, becoming experts at what they do. But I, I get the impression that this person is more of a defensive person. He's an administrator. He knows some security technology, and he's been working on it. Mm -hmm. What kind of advice can we give to someone like that? Don't be a one-trick pony. Mm. <clears throat> Learn as much as you can in other areas so you can provide added value. Yeah, use that flexibility that you get as a contractor to mm -hmm. build your skill set. Mm -hmm. If you can afford to do that. I mean, if yeah. you're going to go on your wife's health insurance or whatever, and you, you're going to be a contractor and you're going to have flexibility, uh, you know, use that time wisely. Choose wisely. Choose, Choose wisely. wisely. Yes, but if the allure is you know the the pay is all you know double or triple what they're making, right? That can that can we we talked about that that can blow up real quickly by the time you start paying for all the stuff that you didn't have to pay for before, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. If, if you do the math, and if you do stand yeah. to let's say you get paid three times, but you're still standing to make twice what you're making, do that. Realize there there might be a time limit to that, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and during that time, work to build your skill set and plan your next move and look ahead. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, and uh, and also uh, you know, especially especially in this consideration where they can't bring you on as a full time employee, but we can bring you on as a contractor. I mean, I get sort of the way the operational versus capital expense for something like that yes. works. Mm -hmm. um, make sure you have a good understanding as to at least in this situation how long that capital expense may last for, right? Um, and potentially how long your contract is going to run for, and you know what the penalties for closing early are and stuff. Well, and there's <coughs> pros and cons to how much you sign up for in your contract. Yeah. And understanding that even in the contracting world, uh, a lot of times it, it's sort of, at, you know, the company can change their mind and terminate the contract, and you're usually not in the position as a one-person mm -hmm. company mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. kind of fight that. Yep. I also think that if you're good enough at what you're doing, it, you know, if you're working for a company and they can't bring you on right now, they want to bring you on as a contractor, they want you. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it, it, it might be a good thing to do and things change down the road. If you're, if you're that valuable, they will find a spot for mm -hmm. you. They the, will find a way. I've to seen that. Of course, then yeah. make sure your contract doesn't have sort of the anti-poaching agreement in it. Right, Because right, they right. may want to bring you on from a contractor to a full-time employee, but their, con their, their contract may say that they can't hire independent contractors that have been with the company because it's considered poaching. Yeah, mostly yeah. that so rule is, is broken. It though. is, but it's yeah. still something If there's no third consider. party invo involved, I've seen that rule broken all the time. Absolutely. And because the business can make a great case because they're like, look, we're paying this person X amount. Mm -hmm. It's actually the same or a little cheaper to bring them on full time. Mm -hmm. And they've proven that they've done a great job for us. So we should hire them on full time. At like 100% of the time, the company's like, yeah, just go ahead and hire them. Uh, yeah, abso absolutely. That. But now that's that's a key key point. Have an open conversation about this yes. with every, all the parties involved. If you're going to work for one of those employee uh, right. management groups, you got to have that same conversation with that employee management group because they're the other end of that. And, and as a contractor, too, it's a great <laughs> way to, to try. I mean, you may do independent contracting for a while, and mm -hmm. then you're doing this, this gig for a company. And you're like, oh, this is a really cool company. Like, I've seen that work out really yeah. well where you can work for the company. Hey, that person's happy, and they have a, a long career at that, mm -hmm. at that company, and they started out as a contractor. Mm -hmm. So I think that's yeah. a good positive Absolutely. Um, for yeah, the one, situation. One thought I just had, too, is... You know, in my years hopping jobs here and there, I, I don't do it that often, but I've I've made relationships with various headhunters. Yes, and mm -hmm. I keep tabs with them. That would be a good, um, you know, set of individuals to talk to just to get a feel for where the market is. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I know one guy in particular. Uh, you know, and I can put him in touch with our reader if he's interested. You know, just to have a conversation. You know, what is the outlook? How does it? You know, is this? Especially because they could get into what this guy actually does, right? And you know what his what his expertise is, what his field is, 
and that and you know most headhunters at least the one guy i'm thinking of would be has always been pretty candid about yeah that's a good idea mm, yeah you don't want to do that type right, of thing right they'd give good feedback and good advice and maybe they'd even find permanent placement if that's mm-hmm. yeah ends up being something that's more comfortable for you cool carlos any closing thoughts no none none comes to mind all right we're going to get to security news and I think we're going to talk about the NSA thing. Yeah, yeah. that's probably mm-hmm. going to come and, up. And, I, and I've got one in there good for Carlos, too, that I think he'll, he'll really appreciate Excellent. some news today. We need some fresh <laughs> drinks. And then we're we'll going to get uh, some fresh drinks. We're going to get good and liquored up and talk about security news. So stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 